Welcome back. This is still TV3 New Day, and we're discussing issues with regards to uh, the coronavirus and how we should contain the situation and also look at the role of persons living with disability and how together we can ensure that they are part of the journey of ensuring we contain the situation. This is because Ghana is among the few countries in Africa that have, you know, taken affirmative action in favor of marginalized groups at a higher level with some significant focus on persons with disability. The efforts have resulted in the passage of some laws aimed at promoting equality, inclusion and participation of persons with disability in the national socioeconomic growth and development process. Now, Ghana passed the Disability Act in 2006. Unfortunately, the implementation and supervision of these disability laws and programs leave much to be desired. How do we ensure that persons living with disability feel a part of us and are also comfortable. I've been joined this morning in studio by persons from the Ghana Federation of Disability Organization. Honorable Prince Deborah is former president of the association or the organization with the Kumasi Metropolis. Yeah. Okay. And Suraya Alidu is the secretary for the Ashanti Regional Branch of the association. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And thanks for having us. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. So let's talk about your journey. You feel left out. Yes. Right. As you rightly said, uh, Ghana was the first country to sign out to the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. And since that time, as 2006, Ghana signed and gave herself 10 years moratorium to make changes in our built environment. That is the, our infrastructure, mm -hmm. either the old structure or new up and coming ones, should be modified to suit persons with disability. And as we speak now, not much has been done on that. Mm. So that is why we have taken upon ourselves to, uh, to search for this, uh, uh, this chance. Mm -hmm. we, we, we what went, are the accessibility challenges you're talking about? We are talking mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. the accessibility of the built environment. Okay. And let me chip in this. We are being, sp we are being sponsored by Busak Fund okay. to run this project to let our stakeholders know that we are having this problem, mm -hmm. problem with uh, the, uh, the disability fraternity. Mm -hmm. And BUSAC is working with uh, G, uh, Ghana, uh, USAID, USAID mm -hmm. and Danida. Mm -hmm. So they are the affiliates who sponsors us to be on this program okay. to let our stakeholders know that these challenges are still there. So we, they need to make amends on our disability so that persons with disability will live a better life okay. in the Okay, so this, this project is to register fresh concerns on the fact that you've been neglected for so long yes and it's time for us to take a look at what your accessibility challenges are yeah. but Suraya, what are the some of the accessibility challenges usually when we talk about accessibility challenge mm -hmm. of persons with disability what people readily think about is the physical ones okay. but it transcends from that mm -hmm. there are physical barriers that shape disability and then there are social barriers that shape disability and there are other factors as well so the mm. physical barriers like uh, medicine labels with small writings so small that um, someone with a partial uh, visual impairment mm. can't read mm. or maybe uh, a hospital and then at the entrance of the hospital there are stairs infringing upon my right as an individual to you know there should be a slide where you can just you know yes the, the ramp yeah. or maybe even um High pavements mm -hmm. in, in the middle of our streets, mm -hmm. you know, hindering someone from crossing the streets with ease. Mm -hmm. These are some of the physical barriers. We have social barriers like discrimination, like um, um, antagonism at the workplace, mm -hmm. or even sometimes difficulty in getting employment mm -hmm. as a, a, a person with disability, mm -hmm. among other social cultural discrimination as well. Mm -hmm. uh, now I, I can say that uh, for the cultural um, discrimination has come down a bit because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, I think the last election or so, the CPP flag bearer was able to go to Mencia yeah. without mm -hmm. any problems. He mm -hmm. is in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were happy about that. I mean, some success uh, was shocked there, right? So, yeah, but when it comes there to, are, yeah, yeah, what, what you mentioned about the medications, the labels. writing yeah, on, the, on, the, on the labels, I mean, what can we do about that? Because if you have, if you are visually impaired or you have a problem Pashio with your... impairment. Okay. Well, you, you can get me, glasses. 
yeah. you know, to aid you to see better. I mean, should we be having that conversation? It brings me to the other um, barriers we have mm -hmm. to accessibility, mm -hmm. like brails for our um, visually impaired uh, persons. They are not a hearing uh, aid. They are not around. We don't have it available. The brails. It is challenging because okay. we've had issues where a young girl was taken to school and was giving the same book as someone with two eyes functioning. Which school? should use mm. I, I, for for. Um, <laughs> okay, because for, I know that the, we have a special school for for these. Um, yeah, but persons living with this, this especially people who can young, okay. like yeah. Mm. So she wasn't. Um, at that age when we could take her to the school you're talking about. Okay. But I, I just brought that in because it, it's part of the challenges we're facing every day. Mm -hmm. Every day we get issues, people come complain to us. And uh, the white cane also used by our visually impaired persons. Mm -hmm. When we talk about accessibility, mm -hmm. usually what comes to mind is the physical structures. But it is more than that. Mm -hmm. It is way more than that. We mm -hmm. have um, hearing impaired persons who have... Interpret interpreters have gone to school, they've learned how to interpret, and mm. they are not being used in this country. Mm. You get it. So you can't, have, you can't access jobs, you know, because you're disabled. I mean, but I've seen people... I, mm. I, I was able to um, get a job after okay. school. Okay. I was a news anchor for four years. Okay, at which Capital media House? Radio in oh, Kumase. Okay. After my journalism school. But not everybody would be as lucky as I have been, mm -hmm. you get it. Mm -hmm. So there are those issues, we need to discuss them. And like I said earlier, we have nine organizations under GFD. So mm -hmm. that I am not experiencing, that doesn't mean someone in another organization isn't. But in, in, in this, your advocacy, I mean, how can you, for instance, if I'm a private person, you know, I have my company and I'm looking at returns, I'm looking at making money. And so I would want to employ someone who can't give me, who can't work faster at a particular rate so I can get my <laughs> return. So it, it's a challenge, yeah. you know, not just for Ghana, but it's a global challenge. Yeah. How, how do you think government can help in this journey? Because if I'm a private person, I'm trying to make money. Right. And you will. Yes, so let me speak about to how, you about that. Yeah. How you will. Right. Yeah. You said it right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in our disability, and that is mm -hmm. why we are all struggling to get it passed. Because mm -hmm. we have a segment, a clause in our disability, when you engage a person, with a, a person with disability in your facility, you have a tax relief. Okay. You have a tax exemption. Okay. So, by employing a person with disability in your facility, mm. there is a tax relief on your annual tax returns to the government, mm -hmm. of which you are enjoying because of my disability in your facility. Absolutely. And I also will be enjoying that same uh, tax exemption. Mm. So, we entreat our, all the private uh, institutions and other stakeholders to engage us. They are on the blind side of our disability act. They don't know all these things in their mm -hmm. in the act. Yeah, mm -hmm. they don't know. Mm -hmm. So that is why we are getting the chance to come out to say that. Yeah, to advocate mm -hmm. on our disability act for us to get it passed. Mm -hmm. Quite recently, we heard a president on the SONA that oh, we have made amendments. All the amendments are going through all the processes. Mm -hmm. So right now, we are waiting for the president to assent to it to give it the uh, back end of the. Mm -hmm. So, back to what my sister, what my sister was saying, mm -hmm. on medication of our brothers with mm -hmm. visual impairment, mm -hmm. as they, learnt, as they, they have learned the Braille, mm -hmm. there are some drugs mm -hmm. of which they have been dotted on it okay. to indicate the, the drug. So, even our currencies that we use, mm -hmm. when we bring, we bring in new prints, mm -hmm. there are some... Uh, inscriptions Some or features, features yes. that will let you know that this, this is, is 20, purpose. Sat, yeah. 20 CD. You see that, right? Okay, okay. The triangle okay, here. Okay. It signifies the amount mm -hmm. for our brother to know that this is 20 Ghana cities. So if you are visually impaired, you can tell. You can feel it. You can touch and part. feel it. Okay. So that is what we are advocating for. Mm -hmm. And our brothers with mm -hmm. uh, albinism, mm -hmm. they too have to have a uh, large prints. Mm -hmm in your daily activities, because okay. we are all assessing education. Mm -hmm. We have all of them out there mm -hmm. who have put much effort in your education curriculum. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to some textbooks in their... Uh, curriculum. Co co yeah. It's they find it, they are all in small fonts. Yes. So, they so it should be bigger prints. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But which institutions are you targeting with this, uh, with this um, project? Well... Surya. 
We are exactly. targeting right from the seats of government okay. to down to the, 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 the low-level person. Mm -hmm. We're targeting the president. Mm -hmm. We're targeting parliament that passed the bill. Mm -hmm. And after 10 years, mm -hmm. in fact, after almost 14 years, yes, because in June 2020, mm -hmm. the act would have been 14 years mm -hmm. after it was passed. After and this was moratorium passed, yeah. was a 10-year moratorium, which yeah. has passed like three years ago. So we have a problem implementing, you yeah. know, exactly. some of these um, laws we passed. But before we go, let me tell you, let me ask you about um, the whole measures put in place with this uh, outbreak of this coronavirus. Mm. What do you make of the measures government has put in place so far? Let, well, let me start with you. Well, we are peeved. The reason why I said is that our president did not do well on our side. Why? In respect to our hearing impaired, mm -hmm. there should be a sign language interpreter in our social network, the print, uh, the audiovisual network, mm -hmm. to let us know the message coming out there to them. Mm -hmm. uh, up to now, only GTV telecasts uh, sign language interpretation on their network. Mm -hmm. What are the rest doing? Mm -hmm. What not quite recently ago, the uh, our Speaker of Parliament mm -hmm. did mention that uh, they are going to use sign language interpretation at Parliament proceedings. Mm -hmm. But when are they going to start? When are they that, going to start? When? So, 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 so what you're saying is mm -hmm. that uh, we've had the, the, the President address us three times. Yeah. And on all these three occasions, yeah. we haven't yeah. had any sign language, you yeah. know, telling the visually impaired and the all hearing the, the hearing impaired, impaired yeah. on exactly what, what the president is saying, Say, which yeah. is unfair to you. Right. Yeah. In fact, what just else? this recent one, yeah. I took it upon myself to monitor every TV station. I called mm. some friends in, at GTV because I, I thought that, okay, it's at least issue. GTV would have an interpreter. Mm. No. Mm. The answer was negative. It was negative. And it's okay. dumbing because... Um, what it takes for all of us to get infected is just one person, one right? One person, yes. So if you sideline hearing impaired people, maybe not um, intentionally, but mm -hmm. you sideline them anyways. Mm -hmm. You sideline hearing impaired people who can't read. Mm -hmm. The emphasis is on they can't read. Some can't read, but mm -hmm. not all of them. Not all so of those them. who cannot read, they need an interpreter to tell them what's happening. Mm -hmm. They are all Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. We are all at risk of this coronavirus. Mm. But are you, are you uh, educating your members on what they should be doing in the meantime? Washing yeah. your hands under running water Sanitizing and all that. So they're, they're doing as often that. as you can and all that. All right. So we're grateful that you made time to speak <laughs> with us. Uh, Honorable Prince Deborah is former president of uh, the Ghana Federation of Disability Organization, Kumasi Metropolis. Sureya Alidu <laughs> is a secretary for Shanti Regional Branch of the Ghana Federation of Disability organizations and i mean what they're saying is that they want government to implement uh what the law it passed 14 years ago the disability act also they're calling on government to involve them with this fight to contain the coronavirus spread the fact that all the address we've seen from the president does not have any sign language and they're hoping that governments will pay attention to that this 